Okay. That will probably do. And this is an introduction to matrices. Okay, we're going to do a little bit with matrices. Um, and uh, if you're in the MDE 61, uh, well, we're going to do what we did. And then if you're ahead of everybody, I'll give you something a little more to do. Okay. Uh, you won't necessarily have to do it, but just uh, sit there without anything to do. We'll change a couple of things there. Uh, Okay, we'll fill in these numbers as we go. Here's the idea. Imagine an island where you have a thousand people. And those people live forever. That's our model, okay? And they don't reproduce, okay? So that's always the same thousand people there. Now, the, sociology of the island is such that everybody in the island falls into one of two categories. They're either sane or they're demented. Okay? And of course, the demented people can only do so much harm because everybody's immoral. <laughs> okay? And, and, and uh, you know, sane people can do anything they want to keep the demented people in line, you know, without killing them off. Okay, and of course that neat ordinary thing would be everybody kills everybody off and nobody survives the island, uh, which is why we make them immortal. Okay, so thousand people initially five hundred are sane and the rest are demented. So tell me, how many hundred demented people are we going to have? Five hundred, right? Okay. Now every month. I'll say 10% of the same become demented and 30% of the demented become same. Okay. So my question is, That word is demented. I had to squeeze it in because I didn't leave myself enough space. How many say it and how many is demented? After the first month. Now, if you were in the support course last time, last hour, an hour and a half, whatever it was, you ought to be able to get this pretty quickly. So I would tell you, just go ahead and set up the transition matrix and use the transition matrix to forecast ahead a couple of months or a few months, as many as you can while everybody else is working this out, okay? That's what you can do if you don't want to just sit back and relax. If you want to sit back and relax, you did great in the last class, that's okay. Uh, but there's something to do if you get bored, okay? Use the transition matrix to see how far you go in the future. Okay, so the rest of you don't know what a transition matrix is. Okay, because you're very sane. <laughs> Only demented people would know it at this stage. <laughs> but then after today, only sane people know it. Okay, uh, not sure what that all means. Okay, so just calculate the numbers. How many sane and how many demented are you going to have after the first month? If 10% of the sane people become demented and 30% of the demented people become sane. Okay, the advice uh, 
I usually give at this point, just in case anybody's having trouble getting started. And I haven't seen anybody yet who is, but I haven't really looked at a couple of the papers. Uh, some people still write things down. Uh, calculate whatever you can calculate here, and then think about how that calculation, those results, get you closer to the goal. This thing, how many saying in a minute you have after the first month? There are a couple of obvious calculations you would do here. I would say go ahead and do them and then think what those numbers mean and what you would do. Them, okay. Now you might already be ahead of me on that, but uh, my experience is some people need that little bit of a hint. It's also good. Okay. So, okay. Now, again, I said I was saying something about this. Team can zoom did what it does, but um, I don't need to complete that statement since it's kind of gone. Okay. So, what do we do? I'm going to show you one way of setting this up. Okay. I'm going to say you got. Get myself an update here. We got saying we got the minute, we got 500 of each. Okay. Then in the first transition, 10% of this 500 become the minute. Not 10% of 1,000, 10% of 500, because that's how many same we have. Okay. So, Now, I've written the numbers kind of small because I don't leave us all that much room. I'm just saying we do 0.1 times 500, and that gives us 50. So now we know that 50 people go over here, right? So I'm going to write that 50 a little bigger. This is where the 50 comes from. So I'm going to write it here on this arrow. So now I know I can visualize 50 same people going over to the demented category. Okay. And then 30% of the demented come over into the same category. 30% is 0.3. And that's 150. Okay. So I'll put 150 here. And here's the calculation. Okay, well, then how many same people am I going to have? in the next month. Well, I have 500 when I start. I'm losing 50. So I'm going to subtract 50. And I'm gaining 150. So now I have 600 same people. And most people got that, uh, unless you kind of glitched on, on how many same people were there? If there weren't a thousand, there were 500. Uh, what do you do here? You multiply by 0.3, okay? Because that's how you do 30%. Okay, so I don't think anybody's going to have any serious trouble with that. Right now. Okay, on the demand, you have 500, you're losing 150 and gaining 50. Now, future 400. Basically, you have a net of 100 going one way and a net of 100 going the other way, right? Okay. Okay. So, well, we could continue this. Now we could then do the next transition. Okay, well, probably shouldn't have drawn that line there. Okay, but there you go. What we'll do here 600 and 400. What's going to happen now? Well, 10% of this is 60 now. And I'm not going to write out the calculation, but it's 10%. Okay. Calculation here is 30%. That's 100 points. So the next transition, we're going to have 600 minus 60 plus 120. Over here, we're going to have 400. Plus 60 minus 120. 
and that's going to be 660 down 340. Now let's notice something. These numbers still add up to a thousand, right? Because they're not losing any people, they're just moving from one group to another. Okay, and these have to add up to a thousand. Okay, well, that's pretty easy. Okay, now I'm going to switch over to the problem we did in the previous time. Just save a little time so we can talk about. Couple of other things, relevant application of pre-calculus uh, turns out to be uh, that rocket. Where the rocket, the Artemis project? How many were? Aware of? How many are aware? Of? Are you paying attention? A big deal. Okay, I'm going to tell you about it anyway even if you don't have any curiosity. Well, obviously you're doing your math and concentrating on your studies because you all have really good work habits. Where you're not aware of anything that's going on in the world except maybe two or three conspiracy theories. Okay, uh, and try to ignore those, try to identify them and ignore them. Uh, you got them on the right, you got them on the left, even got them down the center. One of the conspiracy theories is that we never really went to the moon. Really stupid. Okay. Really, don't be offended if you really believe that, but uh, evidence is pretty compelling. Uh, you want to get convinced, go down and watch a launch of a good rocket someday. That's a profound experience. Uh, okay. Uh, The original problem has 20%. Okay. We're going to transition over to the 20% problem. It's easy to understand. Your numbers are a little different. Here we have 50 going over this way and 100 coming back this way. Well, it's the same 50, 10%, right? But it's now it's only 20% of 500, which is 100. That's going to give you 550 and 450 instead of 600 and 400, but it's the same calculation, the same scheme. There's really no difference. Okay, for these numbers, everything follows. You've got 10% here, 20% here instead of 30 gives us these numbers. So we have these. We generalize this. Now, please don't read these S's as fives. Okay, they're S's. You got a little loop up here, and I think I wrote them big enough that you can see that loop. Okay, so everybody focus. That's an S, that's an S. These are fives, but there are no fives over here. So it looks like a five on this side of the board. It ain't. Okay, it's an S. Fair enough? Here's the same scheme. Instead of writing 50 here and 100 here, I write 0.1s because you're going to multiply the number saying by 0.1, which is 10%. Okay. And they're going to go over this way. And 20% of your demand are going to come over here. That's 0.2d. S stands for the number saying, D stands for the number demanded. And this scheme works for these numbers, it works for these numbers, and it'll work for these numbers, okay? So whatever your number saying and demanded is, this tells you how to calculate the next one. In this case, how many saying are we gonna end up with? Well, just like here, we ended up with 500 minus the 50 plus the 100. Here we're going to end up with S, which is what we started with, minus the point one S plus the point two D. 
That does not make sense. This just summarizes the calculation we did down here. And the number of demanded, this is a number saying, this is a number demanded, okay? And how do we get a new number demanded? Well, we're gonna add the point one S and we're gonna subtract the point two D. Same thing we did with the numbers down here, okay? Um, so what I'm going to ask you to do, to make sure you understand this, is go back to your problem that you did with 30 percent. Tell me, for the 30 percent problem, first of all, What are you going to do to get from here to here? What's, what, what, what's the calculation you're going to do for this arrow? And what's the calculation you're going to do for this arrow? Okay. Now I'll give you a hint. Calculation you're going to do for this arrow is going to be point S, yeah. Point one S, right? What are you going to do for this arrow? Okay. So just kind of put that into the picture. You had a nice circle around it, but it's that high. So, okay. It's a second still recorded. Okay. Uh, okay, that looks good. Everybody pretty much has a point three D here, right? You're going to take 30% of this, which is just the same thing you did with the original calculation. Okay. So, what's the new number of S? Well, the new number of S will be. <coughs> It wasn't the right of Hanson L. Have it. Differential equations where we do Laplace transforms, even though I haven't taught that course sometime last year. Future again sometime next year. Okay. Anyhow, still in my. How many things we're going to have, right? Because we got S, but we're going to subtract the point one S that goes over to the demand. We get to add the point three D that comes back to us, right? So this is how many same we got. How many demand we're going to have? What are you going to write down here that I didn't leave myself room to write? Okay, so people do quite well with this. You see that the number saying is going to be the number you started with, 
minus the number that went over to the demanded, plus the number that come back to you from the demanded, right? And then for the demanded, it's going to be D. Plus 0.1s minus 0.3d. Okay. Now, can we simplify this? Let's just put it in terms of x's and y's. How would you simplify 10x minus 2x plus 5y? What would you get? How many x? Ten x minus two x plus five y. How many x is you going to have? Eight, right? Ten x minus two x is eight x. Okay. And you're still going to have the five y, right? Now, what if I put a decimal point in front of the ten x in the 2x. Okay, so it's now 0.10x minus 0.2x. It's like 10% of x minus 20% of x, right? That would give you 0.8x. And let's say it's 0.5y. Okay, same thing. So how are you going to simplify this? Now you don't have x and y, but you got s and d. It's like x and y, except different symbols, right? So if you wanted to, okay, you could write this as x minus 0.1x plus 0.3y. And it would be more familiar. You'd see how to simplify it, but then you'd see exactly what's going on with this. So can you do that? Okay, now if it's x and y, x minus 0.1x, well, that's like 1x minus 0.1x, right? 1 minus 0.1 is 0.9, and everybody got that. And over here, what do you get? You got a d and a minus 0.3d. Okay, that gives you 0.7d. Well, okay. If I do this in terms of x and y, it's like y plus 0.1x minus 0.3y. Okay. Make sense? And that gives you point one x plus point seven y. I'll keep the x and y in order. Yeah, but if you wrote 0.71 plus 0.1x, that's correct. But I'm keeping them in the same order for reasons that you'll see in a minute. Okay. Well, put this all in parentheses, sort of. If I do it up here, it's the same thing. S minus 0.1s is 0.9s. And here we have the point one S plus point seven D. Fair enough. Okay, so this is all pretty easy. You start with the numbers, make sure you understand how the numbers work. Then we symbolize, making it a little more abstract, but a little more general because now. I can do the calculation quickly. No matter what X and D happen to be, I can plug them in and do the calculation and I know it's going to be right. Mm. It's off of my screen. <clears throat> I wish you could strangle whoever puts up these pop-ups. I wouldn't strangle them too bad. I'd let them live. <laughs> but I try to teach them a lesson. This is what it's like not to be able to breathe. Stop it. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I, I, I control my violent tendencies as long as I don't slip over into the demented category. A lot of people are bigger than I am, and I'm getting kind of old, you know. 
you got to be, you got to temper your, you got to choose who to strangle, who not to. It's a decision. And sometimes it's a tough decision, but you got to make the hard decisions and say, nah. <laughs> No, you get irritated. Okay. But these people who do the advertisements, slap them around, I don't know. Um, punish them somehow, maybe not physically. Seriously, you can't blame people for an ad advertiser stuff. And I wish there was a way to block it. It didn't slow down the computer. Okay. So there we have the calculation scheme. Now I'm going to show you a more compact calculation scheme. Okay. This calculation I write like this. Now, what am I going to do with the point nine in order to get this? Well, I better multiply it by S, okay? What am I going to do with the point three? I better multiply it by D, so this gives me this. Use little mathematical symbol. Equal by definition, I define this to mean. Oh, there's my. You know, I'm going to someday. I'm going to write that down accidentally. Start teaching how to solve differential equations using solutions. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then I'll start calling it Lagrangians, which is even more fun. Okay, this is 0.9 S plus 0.3 D. That's how we define it. Now, if this is how we multiply, we call this a row vector, we call this a column vector, or just a row and a column. But we write rows with brackets. We write columns with brackets, okay? That makes it a row vector and a column vector. Okay, so what calculation would you do over here? We could put in this set of brackets and this set of brackets if you want to get this. Write it down for me. Okay, except for a couple of people who understandably can't read my handwriting, that's a point seven. A couple of people had a, some, some other number there, but the scheme was correct in each case. So once that's correct, as you see, it's point one, point seven times S D, because the definition is that you multiply the first number in the row by the first number in the column, the second number in the row by the second number in the column, right? Now let's just digress. I'm just going to give you a row of numbers and a column of numbers. I'm going to give you numbers that don't have anything to do with this model. What would this give you? What number would you get? No symbols even, just numbers. And then what would you do with this?
accomplish partially. And notice I don't know when this is recording and when it isn't. These pop ups, the delay, the zoom, it's getting really aggravating. Uh, I'm most to the point, but really want to at least insult the perpetrator to their face. <laughs> don't want to get through. Uh, okay, now the, notice that when we do this, there's a plus sign, right? We do get three numbers, but we don't just list 0.9s and 0.3d. We do 0.9s plus 0.3d because that's the calculation. And that's how this is defined. So some of you are just listing the three numbers you get here, and they're the right numbers that you're going to add. Of course, if one is negative, you add a negative. And you're going to do what's kind of obvious. OK, now, as uh, most of you are seeing, This is impossible. Okay. You match the three with the one, you can match the five with the two, you match the negative two with the negative three, and just like you did up here, but what are you going to match up with the four? Okay, so Now, the chapter of the four, you got to match up everything. You can say that, but the definition clearly doesn't work. And most of you kind of left that one blank because you weren't sure what to do. Okay. Well, now you're sure what to do. If they don't all match up, you can't do it. And you say, this doesn't make sense. It's not a valid operation. Okay. In this one, now you're going to say that this is, I'll just write the numbers, three times one is three. Five times two is 10. And negative two times negative three is six. And you add all this up and you get 19. Okay. Now, some of you got a different number. It looked like you're doing the right thing. You might have copied one of the numbers down wrong. Okay. Now, notice there are no brackets around this. Okay. No square brackets. It's just a number. The answer here is just a number. It's 19. The answer you get here, if you put in S equals 500 and D equals 500, is 600. Okay. If S is 500 and D is 500, you get the 600 that you got in this original calculation. Okay. And if you plug 500 in for S and D, with this calculation, you're going to get this 400. So again, these symbols tell you what to do without having to go through all the reasoning of this goes here and that goes there. This takes care of it all because it models the entire process. Now it gets even better. What do you think it would get if I did this? What do you think I would do if I ask you to do what 
what do you think would be the sensible thing to do if I write this down and ask you to calculate it? Remember, the only operation we've got is multiply row by column, right? Of course, now we've got two rows, so we're going to have to do each of those two rows by the column. So how do you think you'd write out your answer here? Now, you're just going to make a guess. And I don't expect everybody to guess correctly, but I want you to guess anyway, and then I'll tell you um, what the convention is, okay? Okay, now, not everybody guessed the same on this. Uh, but one common guess, which is almost what we would conventionally do, is that when you do 0 0.9, 0 0.2 times SD, you get 0 0.9. S plus 0.2 D, right? And then when you do 0 0.1, 0 0.8 times S D, it's like you would do over here if you have 0 0.1, 0 0.7, uh, but it's 0 0.1, 0 0.8, 0 0.1 times S. Plus 0.8 D. Now, some people did different things with it. Some people chose to add this to this, which is not a bad guess at all. Turns out it's not gonna match up with what we wanna know about the same demented situation, but it does tell us something important. What do you get if you add this up? What do you get if you add this to this? Write down what you get if you add those. Now we're not really gonna add them, but if you add them, uh, it's gonna tell you something important. Okay, now it's not really what we're going to do. We're not really going to add this and this. What we're going to do is, well, what's 0.9s plus 0.2g tells? That's how many sane people, and this is how many demented people, right? Because the calculation, in this case, 0 0.9, 0 .2, I should use 0.9.3 match up with what we have here and put 1.7. So I'm actually going to change that. Still, uh, I don't think that change is going to drive anybody into the madness. Please number two. And I'm changing the calculation just a little, placing the point one and point three um, Okay. And we can see clearly that's going to be point three here and point seven. Okay. Now if I add these, well, okay. First of all, I'm not going to add these. I'm just going to put brackets around them. Because if this is the number of sane and demented I start with, this is the number of sane that I end up with. This is the same as our calculation right here, 0.9s plus 0.3d. And this is the result of this calculation, 0.1s plus 0.7d. So we want to keep those separate. I ask you to add them, as some people did, and that incidentally tells us something important. Okay. This is our number of sane that we're going to get if we start with these numbers of sane and demented. And this is the number of demented. And now I could multiply this by the matrix to get the number of sane and demented in the next month. Okay, this gives me a column vector that I could multiply by the same matrix the next month. Then I could multiply by that matrix to get the following month. And I multiply that matrix as many times as I wish. Okay, 
So if I want to see how many sane and demented there are after 100 years, I just multiply by this matrix 100 times. And whatever numbers I started with, it'll give you the numbers you end up with after 100 years. You know, there's more I could say, like those numbers converge and stuff like that, but I'm saying as much as is reasonable to say in this course, because really what I'm trying to do is illustrate two things, which is transition matrix, which you're going to have an assignment on, and matrix multiplication, which you need to do. Okay. Okay. Now, if I add these, Maybe a little hard to read, but I'm adding this. I'm adding these numbers. I'm adding this and this. Okay. Well, what I get if I add 0.9s to 0.1s? I get 1s, right? 0.9 and 0.1 is 1. Now, some people want to say it was 0.1 because you're a little careless with your decimal, so you want to kind of make sure you understand that. Okay. But 0.9 and 0.1 is 1. So we're going to get S. And what's 0.3 and 0.7? That's one. That's D. This is the total number of sane and demented you have after the transition. How many did you have before the transition? You had S plus D, right? S plus D, right? That's a thousand. S plus D here, still a thousand. This proves that this scheme always gives you the same total number. And the reason the scheme is consistent with our model is our model is these are mortal non reproducing people. The number, total number is always the same. In this case, it's always a thousand. If we started with 783 of these and 259 of these, we get different numbers. We just have to plug those numbers in here and do this calculation. And the nice thing about it is you don't really have to do the calculation. Now you do. But when you get out in, in the world and know how this calculation works, and this calculation, okay, what's the probability that today, since the stock market is, I don't know if it's up or down, say it's up, okay, stock market is up today, then there's a 70% chance it'll be up tomorrow and a 30% chance it'll be down. If it's down today, these percents are different, you put those in a transition matrix and get the probability that the market will be up or down tomorrow. Okay. You get transition probabilities, and it just not doesn't really work because the stock market has too much psychological factor to it. Okay. But it's a typical thing, and in finance, you try to make more complex models to take account of all the ins and outs of the way people respond to news and stuff during the day. Okay and try to make a prediction, and you might have a transition model with 20 things in the column and 20 rows of 20 numbers, okay? Any computer software program will handle that calculation, handle a million of those calculations quicker than you can blink, okay? And no sane person only demented people actually do 20 by 20 calculations by hand, okay? You understand what's going on. You understand what everything means. So in uh, finance, in science, 
I mentioned quantum mechanics, which is the most successful scientific theory there's ever been. It's never been shown to fail. Okay, it's how you manipulate, or you know how things behave at the atomic and molecular level and beyond. Uh, it's already given us carbon fiber insoles that I'm walking on. Okay, uh, a lot of things that are very practical. Uh, and you don't know how good those carbon fiber insoles feel unless you've tried it. <laughs> okay, I'm not selling, I don't own stock in a carbon fiber insole thing. And they cost $100 a pair, maybe. But I got, I got cheap ones. Uh, they're still getting yeah, a little pricey. Uh, okay. Just saying, that matrices are everywhere. And matrix calculations are everywhere, which is why we include the matrix stuff in this course. Okay, well, there it is. Um, so this tells you how to multiply matrices, sort of. There's a little more to it, but if you understand this much, the rest is easy. Uh, and how you can use transition matrices to make predictions. It's a big deal in most fields, many fields. And you might end up in a field where it is, and you're gonna to wanna to understand it if you do. Uh, at least it's the level of this. Okay. Okay, look, Max, the first thing I want you to do is just do this matrix part and multiply this matrix by this column. See what you get. Okay, as I had kind of expected and hoped, obviously, everybody's good on this. Okay. Now, when I say good on this, not everybody put it quite in the right form, but everybody did the right calculations. Okay. So you'll recognize that when we multiply this, what we get is 2x plus 4y, 7x minus 3y. You got to put brackets around it, but everybody got the 2x plus 4y and a 7x minus 3y. Remember the definition? The definition says, that a row times a column equals what it is. And then when we apply that, we do row times, first row times column to get a row. And we do the second row times a column to get another row. And of course, the first row here gives us the first row here. The second row here gives us the second row here. So whatever formal definition of matrix multiplication you might look at, what I just said is easy to understand. You don't have to decode it. It's kind of obvious. So you want, you want to make sure it's obvious. Uh, and the thing is that you get a new column, okay? So this column has whatever 2x plus 4y is. This column has whatever 7x minus 3y is. Now, that's what this side equals, and this side equals five, negative nine, okay? Okay, well, if this equals this, then this has to equal this. Okay, we can define it that way, we can declare it, but it's the only thing that really makes sense. And this has to equal this, otherwise two matrices, two column vectors, are not going to be. Make sense? Okay. Well, this is the matrix representation of a system of equations. Okay. So I'm going to give you a system of equations and ask you to write it as a matrix equation. So here's a system.
You can write this as a matrix equation. Every day it takes longer to respond to the record button, tempting me to think that I didn't press the record button, so I press it again and don't record what I intended to record. Get on it, Zoom. Okay, anyhow, here we go. Okay, so everybody saw this. I tell you that is I'm surprised that this group I am not surprised. Most groups I'd be surprised. There it is. Okay. Now, turns out this is the form you want to put it in if you want to use, say, Wolfram Alpha to get your solution without having to go through all the details that you've been going through to solve a system of equations. Okay. All you have to do is you have to say, okay, I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation. by the inverse of this matrix. When I multiply a matrix by its inverse, I get what's called the identity matrix. And I'm going to kind of skip that step to say if you multiply this by its inverse, it kind of goes away. I'm skipping something important there, but you understand, like if it was this is a later equation, 5x plus 3y equals 12. You divide both sides by five, right? Or you multiply both sides by the multiplicative inverse of five, which is one fifth. Okay. And you get X equals 12 over five. Whether you understood those numbers, it's the same type of operation with the matrix. And there's a solution. You can put that solution into Wolfram Alpha or into a name variety of computer systems. Okay. And you're not going to be required to know that. I'm just going to tell you how easy it is. Once you put a matrix, once you put, you know, one of the problems that you're working on into a computer algebra system, you're going to type in something that looks kind of like this. Now you're just going to type this side. You're going to type. And you're going to put commas between these two numbers and between these two numbers to tell the computer that this isn't. Five minus four, okay? Then five and four are separated like this. And then if you maybe indicate the multiplication, and you do nine semicolon two. Semicolon separates rows. So this says that five and four are the numbers in the first row. First row ends here, and the second row starts here, and the numbers will be two, negative nine. So that this notation matches this matrix. Okay. And then here you got nine, two. Nine is your first row, that's all there is in the first row. Two is all there is in the second row. So you put a semicolon between the nine and the two, and this represents the column nine, two. Okay. And Wolfram Alpha will spit out a column vector 
the first number in the column is going to equal x and the second number is going to equal y and there's your solution and you didn't have to do any work at all except here's the equation here's what you know how to do okay and then you understand maybe this because that's not too hard to understand but you know you take the inverse matrix so you can even think well okay if this times x y equals this then this equals the inverse of this multiply by nine two it's not a hard idea to get used to then what are you going to do if you have this thing? Are you going to write that out? You're going to write that as uh oh. I left something out there. Let's make sure. I never indicated we do the inverse matrix. You got to raise it to the negative one power because that's what happens here, right? I neglected to put that in there. So she would write here. I don't have room to write with that either. I'm going to get a little flaw here. I've got a little space to squeeze it in. And this is separated from this. Okay, well, I'll fill in the rest of this. So I'm just writing the same thing. It's just that I've got three rows because I've got three equations and I've got three columns because I've got three variables. Okay. And then I write it out in matrix form. Put these numbers in, separated by commas. Put a semicolon there, write these, separated by commas. Put in a semicolon, write these, separated by commas. Put brackets around it, raise it to the negative one power, and multiply it by nine negative two six. Okay, you, you don't need to understand all that at this point, but I want you to understand just how handy this is how it can bypass the struggle and the inconvenience you have of solving systems of multiple equations and multiple numbers. Okay. You have to know how to do it. But once you know how to do it, it's legal to use this. And Wolfram Alpha is there for anybody to use any time. Now, when you do your homework, you better be writing it out because you won't learn it if you use Wolfram Alpha, but I just showed you how. And you could always check your work. Okay, this big delay Zoom has with record button might have caused me not to record uh, a bit of this. I'm just going to go over it real quickly just in case. And if it all recorded, uh, then that's great. Okay, so ask everybody to put these equations into this form. And everybody did right. Okay, now this kind of got obliterated by this. 
BC was five, negative four, two, negative nine, times x one equals nine, two. Everybody did that right. Okay. Uh, and I say that as long as surprise with this group, I'm not. Uh, most groups, uh, people don't stay on task as well. Okay. Uh, at least that's been the case for the last couple of years. Okay. Anyhow, we solved this the same way. Uh, well, we solved this uh, as follows. We multiply both sides of this equation by the inverse matrix. Okay, the inverse matrix is a matrix that undoes the original matrix. Now, the inverse matrix multiplies this side, leaving us just xy. It's like multiplying by reciprocal, except it's not really reciprocal. Okay, the inverse matrix multiplies this one to give us our solution. Now, once we know what the numbers are in the inverse matrix, again, it's really not hard for two by two matrices. Um, it's a little more involved when you invert bigger matrices. Uh, but anyhow, uh, we're going to get numbers in here when we do the inverse matrix. You don't have to know how to do that. Uh, those numbers will multiply the 9, 2 to give us only two numbers. And the first number is going to equal x, the second number is going to equal y. And there we have the solution to our system equation. So you don't have to suffer through the entire process. Now, in this course, you've got to suffer through that process. Um, this gives you a handy way to check your work. Um, and then once you understand the process, you can use Wolfram Alpha, for example, to uh, cut the solution, give you the solution without having to go through all the steps. Again, in this course, you gotta go through the steps and show them. So don't be doing your homework with Wolfram Alpha. But I'm telling you, how you can get the right answer using Wolfram Alpha. Uh, you get the right answer without learning how to do it. So don't do that. If you use Wolfram Alpha, use it to check your work. Okay. So this is the solution. Here's how you put it into Wolfram Alpha, I think. I don't use Wolfram Alpha much. Uh, You have to indicate by typing something in. And here's what you type in. Let me explain it. Uh, the five negative four is your first row. So we're going to write five comma negative four with a semicolon to end the first row. We need the comma so that Wolfram Alpha knows we're not doing five minus four. Okay. Without the comma, five minus four would just give us one. Um, then same thing with the second row. We put our two negative nine in there after the semicolon to tell it to tell Wolfram that here's our next row. Uh, we put the two comma negative nine in there. It's very straightforward, kind of obvious once you've done it a couple of times. And then we raise that to the negative one power because this is raised to the negative one power. Now, when you raise the matrix to the negative one power, you don't do the reciprocals of all these numbers. It doesn't work at all. Okay, it's a little more complicated than that. And we're not going into that in this course. It's, there's an inverse calculated easily. And then you multiply it by this matrix, which has nine in the first row, two in the second row. So let's put nine semicolon two. Tell it that this is the first row and then this is the next row. You put that in, you press the button, and it gives you two numbers. It gives you a matrix. It's like nine, two. It gives you the two numbers. So you're going to equal x and y. Very easy. Now, it's even neater because it's fairly easy to calculate the inverse matrix for two by two matrix, two rows, two columns. Here's a system of equations that we can translate into a matrix equation in the same way. But of course, we're going to have x, y's, and z's that are multiplied by. In this case, 48, negative 70. Is that 792? Yes, that is 792. Uh, okay, 792 times y, 58 times z, 48 times x there, negative 792 times y there, 56 times z, and it's 58 times z. Now, that, that is an 8 plus. There it is. Okay, 
And then the second row multiplied by the x, y, z is going to give us a 73, 24, negative 72, z. And the third row gives us the left hand side of this equation. And the right hand sides are nine, bigger two, and six. Okay. There is the matrix equation. You can put this in your Wolfram Alpha using the same scheme. And you get the solution. Now, there's a lot of stuff that goes on with really big matrices and the whole process and the shortcuts and everything and the heavy machinery of linear algebra, which is a totally different course that we do after having a year of calculus, at least a semester of calculus. Uh, it's what Wolfram Alpha uses to quickly do these calculations. They can be done very quickly. Probably solve a million of these before you could finish typing them. Okay. Um, so, uh, again, we're not gonna ask you about the machinery of doing the inverse matrix, which is what you would need, but we are gonna ask you to be able to interpret something like this as a system of equations or system of equations as a matrix equation, like this or like this. <laughs>